it's, a, it's an interesting concept of ego with vulnerability because that's really what it comes down to and, and what we've been talking about a lot is the fact that those that have the least ego those that have dropped their ego the most yeah often appear to have the biggest ego right because they don't care what other people think so many people you talk about humble beginnings humble beginnings number one if you're talking about being humble on social media you're not because the truly humble people don't have to talk about it, right? It's kind of that whole hashtag humble brag. Like, hey man, I'm a humble guy, but blah, 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 blah. Humble butt, humble butt, humble butt. Like, I guess you make a rap song called Humble Butt. That girl, she got a humble butt. <laughs> the only way that you're gonna get better is by getting help. The only way you're gonna get out of this slump is possibly by allowing someone else in, shedding that ego, explain what's going on and get that third party opinion on what you're doing. It seems like the people that appear to have the biggest ego actually have the least. Uh, and it's because like, you look like a guy, like, you know, one of my coaches, uh, Sean Whalen. I don't know if you guys know Sean Whalen. Um, he's incredible. Um, you know, he, he 100% appears to have the biggest ego of all time. But he has no ego when you actually get to know him. But he can stand on the stage and say, like, I don't care about any of you. Like, I, I could care less about what any of you think. And that comes across as like, oh, it's, this guy's got a huge ego. He's full of himself. <laughs> but he would do anything for anyone. And yeah. it's because of the fact that, you know, he calls it um, the king eats first. And it's putting yourself first. You have to be selfish to be selfless. And you can only give from the overflow of you being taken care of. So you have to focus on yourself first to be able to add value to anybody else. And that to me is the definition of losing your ego. Because, you know, if you're not taking care of yourself, how much value can you really be to anyone? Now that whole oxygen mask first analogy, like everybody knows it, like put your oxygen mask on first. Like everybody knows it, they can recite it. They, you know, it's like a cliche, but the number of people that are actually living that out is very, very low. With ego, those that appear to have the biggest in fact have the least because the ability to say I, I could absolutely care what you think that that comes across as, as as I have the biggest ego but the reality is what it means is like I'll do anything for you I just don't care like your opinion just is of no difference to me uh, and those that I have found that look from the outside looking in look to be the just the biggest ego like this guy's just completely full of himself and you get to know the person it's actually the exact opposite yeah. uh, and I think it's because like, it's because like, of it social media are, are they're, they're lying they're yeah. uh, portray, portraying a certain life and that's why like, I know you brought up stories um, as a really important part right yeah. stories are the tool they shouldn't even be called stories they should be called you know the truth serum yeah um, I look at it as a vlog. That's all, exactly, all it is. Because it's live time they, or it, it doesn't have to be live time, but it's, it's really important of people see me when I get up, they see when I'm with my son, they see me getting on the Metro North train. I don't have a driver. I don't have anything. And I struggle just like everyone else does and get to a meeting, get to the gym, fight through the workout, yep. fly to another meeting, do all these things. And it's, it's the truth. You can't feed your family and your ego at the same time. That's one of the biggest things I see across social media is I see egos being fed, egos being fed, egos being fed. It's like social media becomes this machine to feed people's ego. But you cannot feed your ego and your family at the same time. I think once, that you, once you come to that realization, your world will be unlocked. You will have so many different new perspectives on the way that you see the world, the way that you use social media, uh, and the way that you go about your life relationships and everything that you have. Ego is the enemy. If you've read that book, Ryan Holiday, it's an incredible book, uh, but it's, it's just a fact. You will not feed your family and your ego at the same time. So the, the sooner, the quicker you kill your ego, um, the faster that you're going to be headed towards success. Like, like I look at a guy like Sean Whalen that, that I mentioned in the beginning, like this guy, when he stands on stage and talks, you look at him and you're like, man, this guy's just egotistical. He's just full of himself. It's like, no, like he's just free. 
Like yeah. he's completely free because he can stand there and say like, I don't care what any of you think, right? but I'll do anything for any of you. Right. And, and I think, yeah. And that's the key. Yeah. I think uh, like a lot of people have this disposition of, I don't care what you think. I'm going to do my thing. Great. But I think we have to get really real and say, is that this position while the, the statement is true? Like you shouldn't care what other people think, but is it rooted in love or is it rooted in fear? I was listening again to a number of different uh, sermons from Erwin McManus, uh, Mosaic Church out in Hollywood, California. And he said in the sermon, he said, God wishes to kill your ego, not your ambition. It is God's desire to kill your ego, not your ambition. Just had this old feeling from when I first got started doing this come back to me. And, and it just told me to say, hey, jump on Facebook, get on Facebook Live, and just tell your story. Because that's all I ever wanted to do in the beginning. And I didn't want it to come from a place that came from this egotistical place that it wasn't really about me. Even though it was me telling my story, it was about the process that I've gone through. It, it's about the things that I've learned along the way over the last three years. It's about all the different stuff that I think I would have been able to, to, to glean from had I seen somebody else go through the same thing. But I have to figure out what my intent is on the front end. Yeah. yeah. Um, to be able to guide me in the right direction so that I can do things on purpose, but that there's purpose behind it. Yeah. And so I think you have to take a, a very deep look inside of you and figure out why am I here? What is my purpose? What are the most important things for me to accomplish in my life? And then through that framework of intention, you have to view everything that's on your plate.